Hi, my name is Mark Hardy and I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. My name is Jordan Grossman, I'm from Akron, Ohio. The procedure that we'll be demonstrating today is the subtalar joint arthrodesis utilizing the Fixos II cannulated screws. So the procedure that we're going to be performing is a subtalar joint arthrodesis through a lateral approach. The landmarks are the tip of the fibula, your perineal tendons, the sinus tarsi, and the anterior aspect of the calcaneus. Incision falls along the door, superior aspect of the perineal tendons over the sinus tarsi area and ending at the anterior calcaneus region. The anatomy in this area is fairly limited. The branch of the sural nerve can sometimes be found over the anterior aspect of the incision, dissecting down to the perineal tendon sheath. Once you have reached this level, you can then incise the perineal tendon sheath be able to visualize these tendons and retract them inferiorly. At this point you can visualize the calcaneal fibular ligament which is underneath the perineal tendons. This is a good landmark to give you an idea of where your subtalar joint arthrotomy is going to be. With all vital structures retracted out of the way, uh, lateral arthrotomy to the posterior facet of the subtalar joint is easily obtained, extending this onto the anterior, into the sinus tarsi and over the anterior calcaneus. At this point of the procedure, you can see the the so posterior facet of the subtalar joint has been exposed. The calcaneal fibular ligament has been incised to be able to gain access to the posterior facet. The perineal tendons are retracted within my wheat laner, and I'm able to see a significant amount of the posterior facet. Additional dissection over the anterior aspect of the calcaneus is sometimes necessary to be able to get a visualization into the middle facet of the subtalar joint. Dissect along the floor of the sinus tarsi and this is facilitated once you do put a laminar spreader in between the posterior facet. At this point I remove my wheat laner and I'm ready to distract the joint. A laminar spreader is beneficial to be able to distract the talus and the calcaneus away from each other so that you can visualize the joints and begin pr joint preparation. So at this point in the procedure we have the subtalar joint distracted. Here you can see the posterior facet with our laminar spreader in place, but also you can see the middle facet of the subtalar joint in this direction. It is obviously anterior to the posterior facet and releasing the interosseous talocalcaneal ligaments and some of the sub other subtalar joint ligaments to gain access to the middle facet is necessary to be able to get this type of visualization all the way across the joint. At this point we are ready to prepare the joints and the, both the middle and posterior facets for arthrodesis. This is done in a number of different ways whether you use curettes to remove the cartilage or osteotomes to remove the cartilage down to the subchondral bone plate. I prepare all four facets the posterior facet on the talus, the middle facet on the talus, and the posterior and middle facets on the calcaneus. So at this point we have all of the facets prepared, the posterior facet of the talus, the posterior facet of the calcaneus has been denuded of the articular cartilage. Fenestration or fish scaling techniques can be employed at this point to be able to obliterate the subchondral bone. Also, the middle facet on both the talus and calcaneus side have been prepared. So at this point, you can fenestrate the subchondral bone plate 
This is a joint preparation uh, drill type instrument that you can utilize. prepare multiple holes to enhance the arthrodesis. It's important that the subchondral bone plate is subchondral bone plate is fenestrated or fish scaled with an osteotome to prepare for adequate fusion. The next steps of a subtalar joint arthrodesis are, is positioning and then placement of your fixation construct. Positioning is obviously extremely important as the position of your fusion is gonna dictate the outcome of the patient. I think it's important, or at least I utilize the, sub, the sinus tarsi as, a, as an area to uh, place my finger in, as you can see here. And I use that as a uh, guide to be able to judge how much pronation or supination the foot is placed in. So I usually like to feel the anterior aspect of the calcaneal process against the lateral tailor process. And I know that with my finger in that sinus tarsi that it helps to hold the subtalar joint in the position that I want to fuse it in. The fixation construct that we're going to be utilizing are two cannulated Fixos II screws. They're 7.0 millimeters in diameter. The Fixo screws also come in 4.0 and 5.0 millimeters in diameter. There are two guide wires that you can utilize. There are two types of cannulated screws that are, util that, that are in the 7.0 Fixos 2, which are headless compression screws, one that has a long thread pattern and one that has a short thread pattern. More often than not, when we're doing the subtalar joint arthrodesis, by placing the screws from the calcaneus into the talus, we're usually using the short thread pattern to ensure that all the threads cross the arthrodesis site and provide maximum compression. Initially make one incision on the bottom of the heel. For placement on my guide wire, this is typically center on the bottom of the heel. This is simply a, a, an incision directly to bone, and this will aid in my placement of these guide wires. The initial guide wire that is the more posterior of the two starts on the more posterior aspect of the incision. I am aiming up towards the talus but angling slightly medial as the tuber is slight, slightly lateral to the body of the talus and that will ensure that you do not miss the talus and end up in the uh, lateral gutter. Try to, try to place this perpendicular to my arthrodesis site. Somebody on uh, uh, on the side that can direct you either uh, more vertical or more horizontal so that your perpendicular to the uh, posterior facet is also uh, beneficial. Driving the second wire is performed more on the anterior aspect and this is being directed slightly medial to the uh, first guide wire. Okay, at this point you can see that we have our two guide wires appropriately placed. We have two screws crossing the posterior facet. If the more anterior wire is angled slightly anterior, that is fine too. The three views that I always obtain in the operating room to be able to evaluate my pin placement for my screws are the lateral view of the ankle or the foot, AP view of the ankle to ensure that the guide wires are within the body of the talus, and an AP view of the foot. The AP view of the foot ensures that your most anterior screw is within the talus. Once you have appropriate placement of your guide wires, the next step for the Fixos 2 is for the cannulated uh, depth guide. This is calibrated such that it will give you the inaccurate measurement of your wires, or of your, I'm sorry, of your screws. I typically will take off approximately five millimeters. So this one is measuring about an 80. 
This screw, which is usually slightly longer, measures a 90. Make sure that when you place these wires that they are remain within the talus and don't cross into the ankle joint or have threads that are uh, driven through the talus. Next step is to drill over the wires. This is a cannulated drill bit for the 7.0 cannulated screws. I will tell you that this, this step is optional and when I do drill these I drill one at a time and I only drill approximately three to four millimeters into the calcaneus. I'm now ready to insert my screw. I've selected a 75 short thread 7.0 millimeter fixo screw. Simply slides over the guide wire. Placement of the second screw requires the exact same steps. Another good idea is to remeasure this distal screw as the length may have changed after you provided compression with your first screw. Another option for these screws is to countersink the cortex so that the trailing threads seed into the bone. You would do this particularly in thick, hard cortical bone. The planar aspect of the calcaneus is probably not as necessary. For the second screw, I've selected a 90 7.0 millimeter fixo screw. After placement of the two screw fixation for the subtalar joint arthrodesis, it's important to evaluate the position of your screws. On your lateral x-ray, you can see two screws that are perpendicular and with threads fully across the subtalar joint arthrodesis and appropriately seated on the plantar aspect of the calcaneus. The fact that these are headless compression screws avoids plantar heel prominence and pain uh, with similar headed screws. A lateral x-ray is important to observe and you can see the position alignment of the subtalar arthrodesis is excellent as well as the compression that's been afforded by the fixo screws. An AP of the ankle is also important to obtain to ensure that the position and alignment of the screws haven't changed and that they are both within the body of the uh, talus. In addition, I will get an AP view of the foot To evaluate the position on my most anterior screw is not too far lateral or too far medial and is essentially bisecting the head and neck area of the talus. One final view that is important to obtain is a calcaneal axial view to ensure that the screws are both within the body of the calcaneus and the talus and that you haven't exited the calcaneus into vital soft tissue structures.